Knoxville, Mississippi, Humphrey Coliseum tonight out of the Big Ten. It's the fifth-seeded Nebraska Cornhuskers and the fourth-seeded Mississippi State Bulldogs. First round action of the NIT. Our quarter of the bracket last night, Baylor a winner over Wagner. They will host the winner of this game coming up in the second round. Middle Tennessee and Louisville coming up in round two after last night's as well. Alongside Paul Biancardi, I'm Richard Cross. Glad to have you along. Two teams. You wonder what the mindset is coming in. Big game for both. Yeah, to advance in the NIT, you can't have Selection Sunday hangover. It just can't happen. That's history. You have to know that two teams are going to cut down the nets in April. you got to make sure it's your team. James Palmer, Jr., maybe the lead guy. There you see Lamar Peters from Mississippi State. He's been red hot down the stretch. Yeah, 66% in the last two games in the SEC tournament. He's hard to guard. It's fun to watch. Saw James Palmer just a second ago. Palmer, first team all Big Ten selection this year. Started all 32 games. Mississippi State in some throwback uniforms tonight with State in script across the chest. Abdul Adu will jump for Mississippi State. Isaiah Roby for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers in all black, and Mississippi State controls the opening tip. The two teams that are really clones of each other. Offensively, they run set plays. Defensively, it's a tight man-to-man. -man. You'll notice some differences. We'll tell you about those as we move through the broadcast tonight. Most obvious, we're not playing halves. We're playing quarters, 10-minute quarters. Peters, Stapleton, Weatherspoon, Carter, and Adu, the starters tonight for Mississippi State. Long three, shot clock winding down, won't go, and Roby pulls down the miss. Up tonight from Nebraska, Watson, Gill, Palmer, Roby, and Copeland. Number two strong for Isaac Copeland Jr. Copeland has that range. He's a stretch four man. Nebraska starts three guards, two forwards. Not a lot of size, but a lot of skill with the Cornhuskers. All deep jumpers so far. Here's a three from the wing, and that one is good for Anton Gill. Averages eight a game. And he's best at the catch and shoot, 13 in the black. You have to know where he is, as well as Tyson Carter from Mississippi State. There's Carter on the wing. Doubled out front, dumps it down. Adu, good closeout on defense, and Adu missed the shot. Adu is a shot blocker, rebounder, a great screener. Still learning how to score in the post. Inside, Roby missed the dunk. You don't get much closer. Point blank range that time for Isaiah Roby. And we know Roby has a great pair of hands. Beautiful catch. He just held on to the ball too long. Had a good feed that time inside by Glenn Watson. But you're in the NIT. You got to flush that baby. You don't lay it up soft. Abdul Adu goes to the bench already for Mississippi State, I think dealing with some blood. And the Bulldogs will bring Eric Holman into the game. Mississippi State has missed its first three shots. Feed inside to Holman. Fades away, middle of the lane. Nice touch. Yeah, he's got great elevation. Eric Holman, he, he, he's a mismatch because he can drive it from the outside, but he can, as he just did, post you up on the inside. Mississippi State needs that type of attack inside. They're a perimeter team. On the drive, rims out. Shot won't go that time for Palmer. Side off the glass, Savion Stapleton. What a beautiful pass by Lamar Peters. His head up, his eyes up, delivers it. And we welcome those of you who have been watching Harvard and Marquette. Marquette advancing in the NIT, just underway in Starkville, almost three minutes in. Mississippi State with an early 4-3 lead over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tyson Carter, long two, and the Bulldogs lead it by three. Tyson Carter, 
Outstanding shooter for Mississippi State. That's a guy you got a key on. For the Cornhuskers. Humphrey Coliseum in Starkville. Richard Cross, former Horizon League Coach of the Year, Paul B. and Cardi with you tonight. First points of the game for Isaac Copeland, Jr. The thing about Copeland, Richard, 6'8 plus, but his versatility. Scores, shoots, rebounds, can make the assist. Does a little bit of everything very well. Carter from the corner, off the mark with the three. Nebraska in transition. Tough shot inside by Glenn Watson. Mar Peters. And a foul on Nebraska. James Palmer Jr. picks up his first. Ben Howland, head coach at Mississippi State. Third season here in Starkville. 22nd year overall. And he has had a ton of success in his career. Think about the three final fours at UCLA. He's built a program to win everywhere he's been. Northern Arizona did a fabulous job at Pittsburgh. And he is rebuilding the Bulldogs. And not the flush by Eric Holman. Six minutes to play in the first quarter. Mississippi State a one-point lead. Both of these teams 22 wins on the year. Holman gets a block active on both ends of the floor. Seventh all-time and blocks at Mississippi State. He's long, he's lean, he's bouncy. He's got great timing as well. He really waits for the offensive player to let go of the ball before he tries to reject it. Peters out front. A little separation. When Derry Weatherspoon got his man off the ground and draws the, fly, the foul from Copeland. Tim Miles doing good work as the head coach of Nebraska. He's in his sixth season. 97 wins, 96 losses. Really has generated great support in Lincoln for this basketball program. Nebraska averaging the 11th most fans in the entire country, over 15,000 per game. And they thought they were going to be able to make that next step this year to the NCAA tournament. Well, they were close. And it's the first 20-win season in over 10 years at Nebraska. Tim Miles, boy, he can build a program and sustain it. Wendary Weatherspoon at the free throw line for Mississippi State. Shoots 76% for the year. I mean, for Nebraska, Richard, 22 wins. It's tied for the second most season ever. They had 26 back in 1991 when Nebraska was in the old Big Eight. Could get to that number, but it would take a, a pretty special NIT run for the Cornhuskers. It would mean New York City. Look at that defense by the Bulldogs. Ben Holland, a defensive-minded coach. Obi kicks it. Watson wide open for three. He's off the front iron. Mississippi State 22 and 11 this year. They went 9 and 9 in the SEC. Had a win against LSU in the SEC tournament. Lost a close one to Tennessee in the quarterfinals. 4.53 to go in quarter number one. It's an early two point lead for Mississippi State over Nebraska. NIT action in Starkville. ESP exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Mobile One Annual Protection. Proven protection for 20,000 miles. And Fisher Investments. Nick Weatherspoon this year named to the SEC All-Freshman Team. Scary moment in the SEC tournament against Tennessee. Came down on his hip. And then the play kind of continued. The officials didn't stop play. On the other end of the floor had a Tennessee player come down on him. Very cautious taking Nick Weatherspoon off the floor. They took him to the hospital in St. Louis, checked him out. No concussion, no neck injury. Here he is tonight in street, street clothes for Mississippi State. But it could have been a whole lot worse, Paul. Absolutely. I spoke to him last night in the hotel. He says he feels great. His hip is bruised. His neck is fine. He's hoping his team can win a couple of games, and he thinks he may be able to come back in a week or so. Folks from Mississippi State thought if this were to go a week, maybe 10 days into the NIT, that you could see Nick Weatherspoon back in uniform. 
And certainly he's a big part of the offense for Mississippi State. And you look at all the numbers that he brings, but I'll tell you what else. He brings toughness and competitiveness to this team. He is a ultra-competitive two-way guard. I mean, he's a great defender on the ball, competes hard every possession, can put points up, draw fouls, make the assist. He was in the top 100. He was at number 36 in our ESPN Top 100. And the SEC wanted him. I'm talking about Kentucky, Florida. Everybody wanted him. Mississippi State got him. They had a little bit of a recruiting yeah, advantage. Yeah, I was going to say they had that re relationship with his brother. <laughs> number 11 was already on the team for Derry Weatherspoon and Nick Weatherspoon. Brothers, first free throw miss. Second one good for Isaiah Copeland after the foul on Holman in transition. One point game with four and a half minutes to play. There's Big Brother, who was second team all SEC this year. Mark Peters looking to feed it inside. Gets it down low to Keyshawn Fiesel. Tough move and a flush for Fiesel. Well, Fiesel kept his pivot foot. Little shot fake. Right to the rim. That's good poise. Feed inside and a block down low. Watch Fiesel. He catches it with two feet in the paint. Look at that. Two feet in the paint. The paint's a little bit wider now. See that white tape on the floor. We have an NBA lane. But he caught that deep. When you catch it deep, good things happen. You'll notice the white three-point line, also the white extended lane. They've added four feet to the lane. Matches the NBA lane. Chamanga missed the shot. Mississippi State comes away with the rebound. Also a foot eight inches added out top to the three-point line. It's a three-point line that matches up with the rules they use for international basketball. I have a feeling the shooting percentages from three in the NIT will be a little bit down with that line pushed back. Fiesel off the window. So you go going with four 10-minute quarters in NIT games. Free throws after the fifth foul. Free throw lane widened from 12 to 16 feet. And also on an offensive rebound, the shot clock will only reset to 20 seconds instead of going back to 30. I love that. You get a quicker pace of play. I love the fact at five fouls, we shoot two. And then we reset at the end of the quarter. I love the way the game just can speed up a little bit. Evan Taylor kicked it out. What do you want to see from these two teams? What's the recipe for success? Well, for Nebraska, their ball screen defense is so important because Lamar Peters is going to be in ball screens all night, and they've got to keep the ball moving. No sticky fingers. Tim Miles said, we're a really good team when we move the ball. For Mississippi State, stay out of foul trouble. Without Nick Weatherspoon, they are really thin, the Bulldogs, in the backcourt. They have to shoot 45% Mississippi State. When they do that, they're 17 and 1. Hold on, 6 of 13 to start the game, 46%. And that's not a really high number, 45%. That just speaks to their defense. They really guard the Mississippi State. They just need to score a little bit. Corey Chimanga couldn't get it to the rim that time. Does keep it alive. Three from the wing. Don't go for Anton Gill. Peters late joining the guys in the front court. Had his shoe come off. You're going to see Peters really handle the ball so much more without Nick Weatherspoon. And still try to get him shots. See, he gives it up, gets it back. He'll be in a ball screen. Shot clock at five. Peters dumps it off. A do off the window. Talked about ball screen defense for Nebraska. Lamar Peters can operate in a two-man game as well as any sophomore in the country. Mississippi State has scored the last six. They lead it by seven. Extra pass. Chamanga able to lay it over the front iron. A basket by Jordy Chamanga. Jordy Chamanga, sophomore out of Canada. He's only been playing basketball since he was in ninth grade. That great size, 6'11". Nebraska really needs that in the paint. They're a 
They're a skilled team, a finesse team. They need some power inside. But how about Lamar Peters? Watch this. If this doesn't get you excited, nothing will. Off the ball screen. How about the split, the spin, and then the layoff? That was beautiful. This guy is hard to guard. He's fun to watch. Lamar Peters, 14 games with double-digit points. Pretty good with the handles as well. Shot clock under 10. He's trying to throw the alley-oop. Just finishes up with an assist. Getting it over to Adu. You can't get caught up into all his shake and bake moves. You got to just try to stay in front of him, eliminate that penetration, and make him take contested shots. Easier said than done. Copeland got the jumper from just beyond the free throw line. He's so smooth, so skilled. Isaac Copeland. Four points for Copeland. Paul, kind of crazy to think about. Mississippi State, seven assists tonight on eight made baskets. Against Tennessee in the SEC Tournament quarterfinals, they had one assist for the game. Yeah, they really struggled to, to, to share the basketball. Look at Peters. He's dancing with it. His teammates are ready for him. Shot clock. He dumps it off to Adu. Adu waits on the defense to come and slams it home. Well, right now, Tim Miles has to make a decision what he's going to do defensively. First quarter comes to an end with an exclamation point by Abdul Adu. Lamar Peters with a little wiggle in his dribble. Beautiful drop off. Adu. Flushes it. Bulldogs up early. Seven point lead for Mississippi, eight, Mississippi State at the end of the first quarter. This Nebraska team, 22 and 10 overall this year, 13 and 5 in the Big Ten. And Paul, you look at it a lot of years, 13 and 5, that's a no brainer if you're in the Big Ten. That means you're in the dance but the schedule this year didn't work out for Nebraska. It really didn't, and they really didn't challenge themselves all that much in the non-conference. They were so close with Kansas in that game. It was a one-possession game, 73-72. So they had a nice win against Minnesota early when they were ranked, Michigan. Good look for James Palmer Jr., his first points of the ball game. He can get you to stop talking, can he, when he makes a shot, when he touches the basketball. Such an improved player for Nebraska, but Nebraska just didn't have a, a strong enough body of work. I know the numbers were close. They didn't have Purdue at home. They didn't have Ohio State at home. And Nebraska was 9-0 this year at home. Roby knocked it away and then touched it last on the end line. Ben Howland's team went 22 and 11. This was the third year at Mississippi State for Ben Howland, and the third year has kind of been the magic year at all of his stops. That's when he's gotten everybody that he's ever coached into the postseason. Well, he's going to get him there. There's no question about it. He's got him to the postseason. He's got him in the NIT. You're talking about the NCAA. He'll get him there. Northern Arizona, Pittsburgh, and UCLA, obviously. Shot clock down to three. Carter didn't realize it, trying to find some space. Just barely got it off. An offensive rebound by Adu. That's nice great hustle. Great hustle by Adu. Well, Mississippi State scores a lot of points in the paint. They're second in the SEC, right behind Texas A&M in paint points. Lamar Peters has not scored, but he's got eight assists. Quindary Weatherspoon for three. And that's the adjustment Tim, Tim Miles just made. Pack it in, make him kick it out. He can't be dumping it off at the rim. He's got to kick it out, and then they got to contest the shot. Peters just calling for his first foul. But, you know, Mississippi State talking about their schedule. They had some great wins in the SEC. They had Arkansas, they had Missouri, they had Texas A&M on the road, but their non-conference schedule, it didn't challenge them at all, it didn't do them any favors. They need to schedule up next year. They'll have the team to do it. And some interesting comments earlier in the season by Ben Howland, that three, dead center for Isaiah Copeland. He's got seven, and Nebraska's back within two. Ben Howland felt like his team needed to win early this year. They had not had as much success as he wanted to, and he felt like they needed to learn how to win. Peter's off the mark with the three. They accomplished that in the non-conference, but the strength of schedule, such a hole to dig out of once they got into league play. And, and Mississippi State is excited to be in the NIT. This is where 
uh, they know they belong right now. I think Nebraska is still hurting a little bit. They, they really believe that they should have got into the NCAA tournament. You know, their bodies are here. It's important that their mind and heart are following suit because if you have that, as I mentioned earlier, selection Sunday hangover, you can easily lose your first game. Nebraska nearly came up with a steal. Mississippi State, one second on the shot clock. Carter gets it in. Shot clock goes off, and it's Nebraska basketball. Somebody's going to have some leadership from Mississippi State. It's a quiet team. Watch them practice yesterday and shoot around today with you. They're, they're a quiet team. They don't talk a lot. You got to hear Ben and Holland from the bench doing all the talking. Open kicks to the corner. Ball three off the rim. But that's touched last by Mississippi State. Knocked out of bounds by Eric Holman. Shot clock resets to 20. They catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. First round NIT action in Starkville, Mississippi. Not the first time that these two teams have seen each other this year. Watson gets the roll off the rim. Soft touch, tied at 19. And Watson played at St. Joe's. Coach Gene Pingator, longtime successful head coach at St. Joe's out of Illinois. And each team just running step plays in a ball screen. And the ball screen defense has not been great. Near turnover by Nebraska. All touched last. Off the knee of Anton Gill. Mississippi State's got it going the other way. 19 apiece between the Cornhuskers and Mississippi State. Lamar Peters has not found his way into the scoring column, but he has had an effect on this game. Eight assists already. Well, 50% of his shots come from three, so you get up tight on him, and he can just blow by you with a low shoulder and a quick first step. But when he gets into the lane, the big man has to help for Nebraska. He's just dropping it off for alley-oops. Tim Miles made an adjustment out of the last time out where he's going to pack it in a little bit more, get the help from the wings, make Peters kick it out. He's got all eight assists. Nebraska State. trailed in this game 19 to 12. The better defense combined with making some shots, a 7-0 run for the Cornhuskers. We're tied at 19. Q Weatherspoon. Peters picked up by Roby. Holman tries a three. Good look for Eric Holman. He's got that ability. He's capable from the outside. He's got six double-doubles this year. Rebounds, block shots, and scores in different ways, mostly inside the paint. First made three of the game for Mississippi State. Came from Eric Holman. That ball tipped up. It touches the shot clock, and it's Nebraska, excuse me, Mississippi State ball going the other way. Eric Holman, little just roll and replace. He replaces at the top of the key. Copeland late. Seven points for Holman, leads Mississippi State. Abdullah Dew's got six. Holman travels there. You see, they're, they're, going to Col they're going at Copeland right now. That was just a call, a little horn set. They come off a ball screen at the right elbow. They throw it back to the left elbow. Eric Holman just trying to drive Copeland to the basket. Third turnover by Mississippi State. But that's the versatility of Holman, the shot or the drive. Watson down the right side of the lane. How about the rim protector, though, with Holman? Makes you think. Fiesel knocks it off of Roby. Good hustle play by Keyshawn Fiesel. Great hustle play. A freshman giving the Bulldogs some really good minutes. Long shot means long rebounds. Just Fiesel just, he just out hustled Roby to the corner. You'd love to see that as a coach, boy. Three, three, three. 
Badu, Stapleton, and back into the game. Eli Wright in for the first time tonight. He's got the ball out front, number two. Feet inside to Adu, and he's fouled on the way up. Free throws coming for Abdul Adu. He is a big target rolling down that lane. 6'11", 250. Played his high school ball at Hamilton Heights, Tennessee. He's got a great pair of hands. Great feet as well. He played soccer in high school. Free throw for Adu, good. NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first round action starts tomorrow. It's on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. Young man from Nigeria. Shooting 51% coming into this game from the free throw line. Those two look pretty good. That, that did not look like a 51% stroke, did it? Bulldogs scored five in a row. Roby, baseline drive, and he draws the foul. Yeah, Roby has a quickness advantage over Adu. Adu is better off guarding in the post, and that's the mismatch. Grass is going to try to go to. Roby can really play on the perimeter with ease. In fact, all five guys play on the outside for Nebraska. Good look from the far side, but short by Anton Gill. Derry Weatherspoon having to shoulder some of the point guard load with Lamar Peters on the bench and Nick Weatherspoon, his younger brother, the SEC All-Freshman out. Eli Wright off the mark with the turnaround. Miss Mississippi State, excuse me, they're all packed in as well. They got some active hands and feet. Nebraska turns it over, Wright had it blocked down low by Roby. Big time block by Roby. A pogo stick, and now the other way. Palmer gets the bucket. Isaiah Roby, he's 6'8", but he has a 7-1 wingspan. 15 in the black. Inside four minutes left in this second quarter. A do with turnaround hook won't go. Roby pulls down the rebound. Yeah. Great post position, great move, just couldn't finish it. Here's Roby. Pass didn't get to him. He goes by a do, drives it in, and he's fouled on the dunk try. Isaiah Roby watching 15 in the black. He gets a piece of it. Nebraska just pushing it. Watson to Palmer. This team can really score the ball. They have offensive weapons, all five positions in this game. Roby has the advantage right now against the Dew. Tim Miles is trying to go to him as much as possible. That's the first point of the game for Isaiah Roby. He has scored in double figures in each of the last seven games. And he's athletic, he's bouncy, plays hard, loves the transition game, gets on the glass. Very good off the dribble at 6'8". Isaiah Roby got both free throws. Look at those mitts. <laughs> Ten and three quarters from the thumb to the pinky. Those are the kind of hands you want in the NBA. Anything 9-5 or better is uh, very attractive to NBA scouts. Feet inside to a do. No whistle, not on the first time, but he got the whistle on the second time and one. A do inside, just persistent. Great catch. Look at his eyes, they're up the whole time. As soon as he catches the ball, he's looking at the rim. He doesn't take his eyes off that basket until the ball goes in. Great persistency by the big man. You see a lot of bigs, they catch it, they put their head down. Not this young man. 
Abdul's got 11 points wow. and six rebounds in 10 minutes tonight. Feels like well on his way to a double-double. He's shooting 51% from the free throw line. In this game, he's three for three. There's a turnover by Nebraska. Mississippi State leads it 27-23, 2.59 to play. consecutive victories for the Yukon Huskies. Well, it's not often you see Connecticut out hustle. That is surprising. William on the drive. Pull up, pull up. Got him. She got it. Mississippi State has ended the streak. Tonight from Dallas, the national title will change hands. The Bulldogs are growling. Guess who with the rebound? Right back up. That is a championship play right there, young woman. And the Gamecocks have their first ever women's basketball national championship. The NCAA Women's Championship begins Friday at noon Eastern on ESPN2 with first round coverage. Check local listings for the game in your area. And remember that all are streaming live on the ESPN app. So you can watch while you are at work. Mississippi State women's team, 32-1 and one on, uh, on the year. Number one seed, number two overall seed behind UConn, who they beat in the Final Four last year. Don't you get excited when you see that shot by Morgan Williams still? 5-5, five, five. you know her nickname, right? You Itty know Bitty, right? Itty Bitty. And Vic Schaefer doing an unbelievable job with the Lady Bulldogs. Xavier Stapleton, long three, and he got it. Just barely even touched the net. Mississippi State matches their biggest lead up seven over Nebraska. 2.22 left in the second quarter. Lead inside and a strong finish down low for Doobie OKK. Yeah, the big fella transferred in from Winthrop where he won the Big South Championship last year. A defensive force, offensively a finisher. Another screener, big man for Nebraska. Nebraska takes it away, pushing it up the floor. James Palmer gets all the way to the rim and lays it up. That's five quick ones for Nebraska. Palmer finished fifth in the Big Ten in scoring. 17 a game, and he does it in a variety of ways. Loves to get to the free throw line and out in transition. Nebraska making a comeback. Minute 50 to go in the second quarter. Three-point lead for Mississippi State. James Palmer, Jr., making things happen. Defense turning it into offense. He's so skilled. He's got great size. How about that straight line push right to the rim? Understands. Quickest way to the basket is a straight line drive. Nebraska now comes out in a little bit of zone. That 1-3-1, they like to play it. No KK goes high. Actually, it was Chamanga that went high, took it away. Copeland on the baseline. Now Mississippi State today in the shoot around, when we were here, they worked against this 1-3-1 zone. They knew it was coming. You're going to see two guys on the blocks, one guy run the baseline. Dangerous. Run through steal for Watson, and he is fouled on the drive by Quindary Weatherspoon. Free throws coming up for Glenn Watson Jr. You play man to man, whole first half, you come out of the timeout, you show that zone, the rhythm offensively for Mississippi State just didn't look clean the last two possessions. You go, from, you go from cutting and screening and ball screening now to spacing the floor and have to find gaps against an extended 1-3-1 zone. In the game for the Watson became a 1,000-point scorer this year. Sitting on 1,033 coming into this ball game. The junior from Bellwood, Illinois, St. Joseph's High School. Yeah. Third in the Big Ten in steals. He's a former ESPN top 100 player. Throw spins out. Makes one of two. Two-point game inside a minute in this first half in Starkville. And Mississippi State, not a great outside shooting team. They got to gap this zone. Still try to get it inside, not settle for deep threes. Carter, good look off the feed from Lamar Peters. Unless you're Tyson Carter. But the way Peters gets into the paint, he draws one, two, three defenders. And that time it was a sharp kick out. He's 
these two teams played back in October in a hurricane relief exhibition game. That was a contest that Nebraska won by four, 76-72. They're trying to cut into a five-point deficit. Clock winding down. Mississippi State going to take a timeout and try and set up one final play with 10.1 seconds remaining in this second quarter. Well, they're going to first talk about the zone. Nebraska with that 1-3-1 extended zone. They'd be very happy if Mississippi State keeps shooting threes against the zone. Now, I know Tyson Carter can really stroke it from the outside. This was back in October here in Starkville. Tim Miles brought his team short notice to meet Ben Hallett and Mississippi State. Both coaches got the microphone, thanked the crowd for being there. Hugging officials, what's that all about? Feel good story, Nebraska won that game by four here in Humphrey Coliseum. Mississippi State with the platform to do some real good things for the people of the hurricane. And then how about Nebraska? Just spent money wisely to get here, right? It was money well spent. Yeah, no question about that. And kind of a tip of the cap to college basketball all across the board and the NCAA for allowing those games to happen on really short notice to raise a bunch of money. That's what happens when you trust people. Sometimes good things can happen. Inside 10 seconds, Lamar Peters guarded by Watson, and he's fouled. How about the quickness of Peters? You know, that dribble's quick, but it's really low. Because of the rules where fouls reset at the end of the quarter, no bonus situation there, and Nebraska had a foul to give. And they got one more. Peters finds some space, dumps it off to a do. Tipped up by Holman, not in time. And we've got a five-point game at the half. We're going to send you to the studio. Mississippi State leading at 33-28 over Nebraska for the halftime report. Here's Adnan Ver, Chris Pistola, Spatola, and Dallin Cuff. Take it away, guys. First round NIT action from Starkville, Mississippi, Humphrey Coliseum. Getting start, uh, ready for the start of the third quarter at the hump. Glad to be with you on this Wednesday night alongside the former Horizon League Coach of the Year, Paul Biancardi. I'm Richard Cross. One of the big stories in this first half has been Lamar Peters for Mississippi State. Came in as a big-time scoring threat, has not scored in the first half, but he's dished out 11 assists. Well, he's impacted the game with his playmaking and passing ability. He gets into the paint so quickly and so easy. Left-handed driver. And he spins and he can find his teammates. And if you close the gap, he'll penetrate and kick. He's delivering the assist in different ways. He's impacting the game without scoring. Lamar Peters, known as a scoring guard, averages four assists per game, and he's now have a career high at 11. Most assists in an NIT game in Mississippi State history belong to D. Bost. He had 13 back in 2012. Peters with 11 in the first half of this game. Q. Weatherspoon kicks to the corner. Xavier Stapleton off the mark of the three, and Nebraska comes away with the rebound. Huskers led by Copeland and Palmer in the first half. Both had seven points. Roby, a three from the wing, and a fast start for Nebraska in half quarter number three. You're going to say, you're gonna say in the finally. second half, weren't you? I almost said in the second half. Nebraska just stretching out defensively and getting beat off the bounce. And there's not a lot of rim protection for Nebraska. They're a pack line defense that has to stay packed in. Three rattles out. Nice. How about the play of Roby inside. Got the bucket chance for a three point play here. Developing sophomore Roby. Shot comes from the left corner, bounces out to the right side. 75% of the time, it goes opposite of where it's shot. Isaiah Roby, good anticipation. When Nebraska came to Starkville back in October for the Hurricane Relief game, it was a family reunion of sorts for Isaiah Roby, but for the very first time. A couple of weeks before that game was scheduled, 
completely coincidentally, Isaiah's aunt, his dad's sister, found his father. They had never met before, reached out via social media channels, I guess, and kind of connected with them. Well, a week later, this game gets scheduled. Isaiah Roby comes here. He meets his aunt, his dad's sister, and his grandfather for the first time. And they are here again tonight, sitting behind the Nebraska bench. It's three. Good for Xavier Stapleton. That's the power of social media. Roby needed about seven to ten tickets for this game. Had a cheering section. Had no idea that he had family in Mississippi. Said it was a really cool thing to get to meet grandfather, an aunt, and some cousins for the very first time. Wide open from the corner. There's a three. Lynn Watson. Watson under 30% for the year from three. Lamar Peters on the drive, dumps it off. Adu lays it over the rim. I know this is frustrating for Tim Miles because they play a pack line defense. That means someone's on the ball, and the other four guys are in a strong help position. Peters getting right to the rim every time. last by Nebraska. Yeah, too much dribbling by James Palmer. Tim Miles told us yesterday, when the ball moves, we can be really good offensively. We are a one-two dribble team and move the ball. Palmer's got seven points tonight. With those seven points, he has moved into the top ten in single season scoring in Nebraska history. There's a foul on Roby. Palmer sitting on seven points in this ball game. And the transfer from Miami at 34 at Ohio State this year. That's a good night's work. Strong move by a dude. Good help defense. Copeland may have gotten a piece of that shot by a dude. Raskin down three and a foul on Abdul Adu. You see how quickly Isaiah Roby just snapped that ball from the left wing to the top of the key. And then Palmer right in attack mode. And that's how Nebraska wants to play, like they're going downhill. Adu goes to the bench. Eric Holman comes in. Adu just picked up his second. Palmer drives in. Holman may have gotten a piece there. That's when he's got to kick out. Stapleton tried the reverse ball, tipped up by Holman, and it rims out. Nebraska wants to run. Watson, great pass. I think Holman just affected that shot just a little bit. 35 and a white. He didn't try to block it, but I think Copeland was trying to avoid him. Weather's been cut off on the baseline by Anton Gill. Here's Tyson Carter, step back at the free throw line, shot an air ball. Whistled a foul underneath. Eric Holman went down hard on the play. Foul's charged to Copeland. Two guys really battling for the rebound. Ball doesn't touch the rim. You can see he got shoved. Shot clock reset to 20. Ball knocked away. Copeland got a hand on it. Watson pushes it up the floor, maybe too fast. Officials say the ball was batted away, and then a foul on Quindary Weatherspoon. Watson, he thinks he's going to the rim. He loses control of the basketball on the open floor. That is so bad, bro. Weatherspoon, he did bump him. That's Big. his third. 
And one of the big keys for Mississippi State is staying out of foul trouble, especially Weatherspoon and Peters. Without their freshman point guard, Nick Weatherspoon, they are thin in the backcourt, Mississippi State. Third quarter, first round NIT action. The winner of this game meets Baylor in Waco. Game will be played on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock tip-off. Baylor the number one seed in this quarter of the bracket. Holding foul called there on Nebraska. Yeah, that's on Roby. Good call. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN Family of Networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. 20 on the shot clock as Mississippi State inbounds. With Q Weatherspoon on the bench, you're going to see Peters heavy with the basketball in his hand. Eli Wright off the mark, tipped around inside. Nebraska comes away. Yeah, Wright was not ready to shoot that when he caught it. Watson into the lane. Taylor with a three, banked it home. Evan Taylor shoots 46% from behind the arc. And we've got a tie ball game. And he is the best perimeter defender for Nebraska to Miles Comey yesterday. And a leader of this team, him and Anton Gill, two seniors. Evan Taylor, a senior co-captain for Nebraska, right on the drive, couldn't get the scoop to fall. There's a follow with the left hand by Holman. Tell you what, Holman steps outside, shoots a three, beats you off the bounce, and he cleans up the glass. Love his versatility and athleticism. Palmer has his three blocked by a dude. Stapleton nearly lost the handle. He's able to get it into the hands of Peters. Holman steps up and knocks out a three from the corner. Points for Eric Holman. That's his second three of the game. That defense from Mississippi State. They are tight in the gaps. They were tight in the gaps. I'll tell you what, they're a great shot blocking team, too. Top five in the SEC. A little slashing across the lane. A little scoop off the glass. Mississippi State led by five at the half. The lead is three with 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Peters dumps it off, a do and one. A do is the leading scorer in this game at 15. That is the 14th assist of the game for Lamar Peters. He get, gets into the paint. He finds the big guy, a do. I do. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. And talks. A couple of teams tonight in Starkville making their first postseason in a while. For Nebraska, the first time in the last four years. For Mississippi State, first postseason appearance since 2012, also in the NIT. Abdullah do at the free throw line, where he is three of three tonight. 15 points and eight rebounds for the redshirt freshman from Nigeria. Short that time of the free throw, and WOKK in the game, pulls down the rebound. From the 
corner won't go. Now Q Weatherspoon's been quiet in this game. He's the team's leading scorer at 50 in a game. Just Lamar Peters has really taken over with his playmaking and assist game, but Q Weatherspoon has to get involved. He's too good not to. Three points tonight for Quindary Weatherspoon on one of five shooting. He's also got three fouls. A do into the paint, but right at OKK who defended it well, but straight up that time. That's a great matchup with two bigs, athletic, strong. You were talking earlier about the wingspan for Roby. OKK, big long arms as well, seven foot, five inch wingspan. Holman couldn't grab it. Nebraska ball. And Hallen's done a lot at the college basketball game. Northern Arizona, Pittsburgh, UCLA. They were the national runner-ups in 06. Returned to the Final Four in 07 and 08. When I was at Ohio State, we played his teams at Pittsburgh. They were so physical. They were so good defensively. And we lost. Both times. In one of the years, we were really good. We went to the Final Four. We had Michael Redd and Scooney Penn. We could not score on his teams. Feed inside. Maybe should have been a foul there. Nebraska gets it back from the corner. Three won't go, and Wright pulls down the rebound. I mean, that little chop you heard across the guy's neck, that should have been a foul. Jordy Chamanga <laughs> got hammered on that shot down low. Play on. It sounded like something from the WWE. Five-point lead for Mississippi State. That was the margin at halftime. Foul down low called on James Palmer, Jr. Free throws coming up here for Eric Holman. He shoots 72% from the line. Third season for Ben Hallett at Mississippi State. They've gotten progressively better from three games below 500 to 16 and 16 a year ago. This year, 22 and 11 coming into tonight's ballgame. We talk about what a great coach Ben Holland is in terms of player development, program development, but he's also a good recruiter, has a great staff. And next year, they got the number 17 ranked recruiting class coming in. They have a stud by the name of Reggie Perry. He's a McDonald's All-American. Big, strong, power forward with soft hands. And I love Robert Woodard. He's top 50. 6'6", shooting, powerful, three man. So you got a power forward and a small forward with college ready bodies and good skill. It's almost like you follow this high school basketball recruiting. Yeah, I do it once in a while. It's a hobby. Copeland out front, got a three. Great pass, too, by Palmer. Penetrated all the way to the rim and threw it out. Shot clock off inside 15 seconds in the third quarter. Every time Mississippi State, you know, pulls away, Nebraska gets a little closer. Copeland with that three is the first Nebraska player in double figures. He's got 10. Floater on the baseline for Mississippi State. And the Bulldogs will take a five-point lead. Into the fourth quarter, winner trying to advance to the second round and meet top-seeded Baylor in Waco on Sunday. The winner of this game between Mississippi State and Nebraska travels to Waco for an 11 a.m. Central time matchup with the top-seed Baylor in this quarter of the bracket. That's on Sunday morning. Also, you've got Middle Tennessee and Louisville. Meet in Louisville coming up. Middle Tennessee impressive against Vermont. Louisville had a tight one with Northern Kentucky. And Baylor. And I'll tell you what, they played that really difficult matchup zone. Manu Lacan playing so well. I think they're a team that's going to get to New York. Nebraska trailing by five as we enter the fourth quarter. A little bit different rule structure during the NIT this year. Four quarters, four ten-minute quarters. And maybe most importantly in this ball game, fouls reset at the quarter break. Copeland inside, can't get the roll. Offensive rebound. Play continues, and there Copeland gets it. When you think about the first quarter, we didn't have a stoppage. 
until the two minute 39 second mark. That was the under five timeout. No free throws, and that was the first time out. There's more of a flow when you have quarters. No one and one in this format either. You get to five fouls, it's two shots the rest of the way. That free throw lane goes from 12 feet to 16 feet. That's the four, four foot difference. Adu just barely gets that off. That is a shot clock violation. And so now Nebraska ball trailing by three with 8.54 to play. Nebraska, you know, they look like they're stuck in mud sometimes, and other times they look like a race car on a racetrack. They're inconsistent right now with their offense, but they got to make sure their defense stays tight. Stapleton tries to go coast to coast, and he's fouled as he hits the underside of the rim. That's aggravating for head coach, and I'm looking at Tim Miles on the Nebraska bench. I mean, when you take a shot, you expect two guys to get back, one guy to protect the rim, the other guy to stop the ball. And Mississippi State have, has gotten a few runouts in this game. Second time that Tim Miles has coached in the NIT. Also did so back in the 2011 tournament when he was at Colorado State. Looking at the guy that was the 2014 Big Ten Coach of the Year. And when you talk about recruiting, they've done a fabulous job with transfers. And they have a young man coming in next year by the name of Xavier Johnson from Bishop O'Connell High School in the Washington Athletic Conference. Coached by Joe Wooten. He's a 6'1 guard who just fits. He's athletic, he's tough. I, I love that kid, and that's a great evaluation. But when you look at the state of Nebraska, there's not a lot of basketball prospects. You know, Tim Miles and his staff, they have to go out of state to get all their players. Strong move inside, Jordy Chimang Chimanga with the left hand. You know, it's really hard in recruiting to go to somebody else's backyard and try to take what they want. One point ball game with eight minutes to play. And Derry Weatherspoon finds Stapleton. Great help that time. And he puts it on the deck. Well, anybody puts it on the deck for Mississippi State. They got to see two and three bodies. Shot clock under five. Hugh had it stripped, and Nebraska with numbers. Strong drive by Palmer. He's got free throws coming, and will give Nebraska a chance to take the lead in this game. Well, that was the best defensive possession for Nebraska in this game. They stay in front of the ball. They help each other. They force the turnover. And what happens? You get a run out. When you get run outs, you get layups, or you get to the free throw line. A timeout on the floor here. Mississippi State leading by one. Nebraska's got a couple of free throws coming up for James Palmer Jr. Good free throw shooter. First team all Big Ten player. The NCAA Women's Championship continues Friday at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on ESPN2 with more first round matchups. Check local listings for the games in your area. Remember that all are streaming live on the ESPN app, so you can watch at work or on the go. But don't go to work. It's kind of a holiday tomorrow. Every day in March is a holiday. One number that really jumps out to me in this game is Nebraska. They're shooting 40% from three. I mean, they're at 35. They're shooting a little bit better than their their numbers. I don't know if they can sustain that, if they can rely on that going down the stretch. And this has been a good three-point shooting team all year long. 226 made three-pointers coming into this game. That's the third most ever for a Nebraska basketball team. It's their highest total in 11 years. But what they really improved is that defense against the three-point shot. Last year, they gave up 42% in the Big Ten from three. This year, they led the Big Ten in defending the three, only 30%. That's quite the flip-flop, right? You go worst to first? Yeah, I talked to Tim Miles last night in the hotel for a long time. He said, we watched a lot of film. There's Mike Lewis, one of his assistant coaches. He's got Jim Molinari, a former head coach at Bradley and other stops, and Kenya Hunter. He's got a great staff, as well as Ben Holland does. And these programs, to me, are just clones of each other. 
you know, Nebraska had, a, I thought, a really good season. When you look at their body of work, 13-5 and five in the Big Ten, not enough to get into the NCAA tournament, but a good season. 20 wins, that's a great season. 22 wins, excuse me. And Mississippi State, 500 in what, in what may have been the best league in the country, the SEC. That's just our fourth lead change of the ball game. And three ties as well. Nebraska has taken a 51-50 lead with seven and a half minutes to play. There's a foul on Roby. That's the second foul on Nebraska in this fourth quarter. Roby's now got three fouls. Watson's got three for Nebraska. And how did Nebraska get this lead? Four for eight from three in the second half. Let's move it. Illegal screen on Eric Coleman. When you get to that screen, you have to stop or you're going to have to quick slip and just avoid the defender. He moves that right hip out. Another moving screen. Jamie Lucky right on that one. That's a good Man. call. And that's the fourth foul on Isaiah Roby. Once you come to a stationary position, you can't swing your hips from side to side. Roby stays in the game. He's got eight points and eight rebounds. Stapleton on the drive, high off the glass. You can see Mississippi State going at Copeland a little bit. He's got to be a better defender if they're going to win this game. A little bit too upright. Roby faked the pass inside. Shot clock at five. Three spins out for Palmer. Carter driving in, and he's fouled on the shot. Severian Stapleton trying to find the lane. He gets it over Copeland. We got a ball game. your bracket quickly we can't be late to the dance bippity boppity boo don't wait till the clock strikes 12. ESPN's Tournament Challenge. You've got until noon Eastern, 11 Central time tomorrow. You haven't filled out your bracket. Wake up in the morning, grab that cup of coffee. Who do you like got? Like I'm going to do. Who do you got? I'm going to fill it out in the morning. Who's My your national champion? Tell me right now. Tyson Carter at the free throw line. You put me on the spot. You kill him. I got the Boilermakers. Really? Yep. I love the way they shoot it. I love their experience. And they got great size. They don't rebound it really well. But I think they have a chance to get there. Once you get to that final four, you know, it's, it's a true statement. Any team can win it. I love their experience in shooting. You said give it to you right now. I'm only doing this in pencil right now. Okay, This is not in ink or, or in Sharpie. Duke is so talented. Kind of lean in that direction. Too young for me Okay, to win a national championship. Foul there on Stapleton. But Jay Wright's club. Love it. Love his team. I had Virginia beating Villanova. And obviously, they lost DeAndre Hunter. Huge loss. I still think Virginia gets to an Elite Eight. Mississippi State leading by three. Gill off the mark. Nebraska sitting on four fouls in this fourth quarter. The next foul puts Mississippi State in the bonus for the rest of the ball game. A one and one, two free throws. Tight game, that could be a big deal down the stretch. And it's gonna come down, this has been a half court game, it's gonna come down to execution. 
Neither team really shoot well from the field. And turnover there for Mississippi State. Layup won't go, but the follow for James Palmer. Watson may have gotten fouled on the original layup. They didn't call it, but the follow was there. It was just great hustle. I mean, he outruns half of the Mississippi State team just to go get two points. And he didn't know if it was going to be a made layup or a missed. But that's what you do. You pursue the play. Five minutes remaining. One-point game here in Starkville. Copeland. Extra pass, Roby, wide open look for three, spins out. Mississippi State got lucky on that one. They all converted back to the paint. Left Roby wide open. Lamar Peters, averaging 10 a game, has not scored in this game, but he's got 14 assists. Loose ball to follow the flush. Eric Holman, a big bucket in Nebraska. Now trails by three. You know, Peters and Q Weatherspoon are averaging 10 and 15 points respectively. They have three between them, but it's been the front court for Mississippi State. Holman and Adu. From the corner, three won't go. Nebraska. Evan Taylor that time couldn't get it to fall. Hornhusker shooting 32% from behind the arc. There's a travel before the basket. Turnover by Mississippi State with 3.33 to play. Eric Holman attacking. The offensive glass, he's got 15 and nine. Mississippi State up three. by Nebraska, Mississippi State with the ball, leading by three, three minutes to play. Tyson Carter had a good look, too strong. Palmer, oh, had it rim out. Nebraska keeps it alive. Gill couldn't finish. Two close range shots for Nebraska. Can't finish at the rim. Well, these teams are working hard on the glass. I'm going to grind it out in the last two and a half. I think Lamar Peters has to get a little bit selfish offensively and look to score right now. In the SEC tournament, Peters scored 24 against LSU, 22 against Tennessee. He has none tonight. Shot clock winding now. Carter with the long two. Mississippi State takes a timeout. What a big shot by Ty Tyson Carter with the shot clock winding down. Lamar Peters has been the master facilitator in this game. Tyson Carter from deep. Mississippi State trying to... Point lead for Mississippi State, 2-16 to play. First round NIT game in Starkville. Richard Cross, Paul B. and Cardi with you. How about this shot by Tyson Carter? Shot clock winding down. That was deep, quick. He is a three-point shooter, but that right foot, actually that's a two. A yeah, long two that time for Carter. So a five-point lead for Mississippi State. Nebraska got to heat back up offensively. They've missed their last five shots, only one for their last nine. And after starting, or in the third quarter, going four of eight from behind the arc, they've missed their last four three-pointers. Roby, wide open, big shot, too hard. Nice break! 
Thought Roby thought about it a little too much. He's shooting 41% from three. He was wide open when he caught it. He's got to believe in himself and just stroke it. Had a big game in the Big Ten tournament against Michigan, 16.7 rebounds. Roby tonight with eight points. That's a huge three from Q Weatherspoon. Nebraska went to that 1 3 1 zone. And the shots that open up the most against the 1 3 1 are the corners. Quindary Weatherspoon goes right to the corner and nails it. Askin's going to have offense and in a hurry. Roby gets the friendly roll, and Tim Miles will take a timeout as Nebraska cuts the Mississippi State lead to six. Winner of this game. Headed to Waco, Texas to meet Baylor. Game will be played at 11 o'clock Central Time on Sunday morning. Baylor, no problem with Wagner last night, the eight seed. A tight one tonight. What a field, the NIT. Think about it, Notre Dame, Oregon, Middle Tennessee State, Louisville with all their talent. Best field I've seen in a long time that I can remember. Great first round matchup here. The SEC, the Big Ten, a couple of 22 win teams coming in. Mississippi State this year went 9 9 in the SEC. Nebraska goes 13 5 in the Big Ten. So if you're in Nebraska right now, you're full court man. If you fall, Mississippi State shoots two, so just play it straight. Peters gets it ahead to Stapleton. Yeah, a couple of traps just to see if Mississippi State would cough it up. Great ball security by the Bulldogs. One minute away. Shot clock at five. Peters with the ball in his hand. Does not have a point in this game. He's got 14 assists. He fires from three and he's short. Nebraska comes away with the rebound. Huskers have got to have points. On the drive, there's a layup for Anton Gill and another timeout taken by Nebraska. Now a four-point game. Great, st a great stop by Nebraska. They got Lamar Peters to take a tough shot as the shot clock was winding down, but he loves that little step back. But Gill, the veteran, the senior, a leader on this team, just a straight line push. Nobody stops the ball for Mississippi State. I, I get so frustrated when I see that. I mean, that is basketball one on one when someone's bringing it down at you in conversion. Somebody has to say, I have the ball, and then try to stop it. What is it, coaches always said? Ball, you basket? Ball, you basket. Sprint, turn, and talk. Whatever you want to say, you got to stop that ball. Hey, after Lakers Warriors tonight on ESPN, don't miss Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll go one on one with Trailblazers star Damian Lillard. And because it's Steph Curry's 30th birthday, we celebrate with some of his best 30 footers. Plus, the inside scoop on what scouts are saying about Baker Mayfield's pro day performance at Sports Center with SVP, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Foul by Nebraska. You like the strategy to at this point extend? No question about it. You, you try to get a steal on the inbounds. If not, you have to foul right away. You're under a minute, two possessions. And that clock is your enemy. And Mississippi State, a, not a good free throw shooting team. In this game right now, they're right around 58%. Xavier Stapleton pretty good on the year. 80% free throw shooter Stapleton. 20 of 25 on the season, and he makes the first. That was the fifth foul committed by Nebraska in this fourth quarter. Two free throws for Stapleton. And if you're in Nebraska, get it, spread it, and drive it. Two big free throws for Xavier Stapleton. Six-point game. Watson pulls up for a deep three. Gill trying to keep it alive. Off of his leg, out of bounds, Mississippi State basketball. Nebraska set a little double drag screen. Mississippi State, they just switched it all. And I thought Watson would have 
Just took it right, take it right to the basket on the switch. I thought he settled. Especially at 28% from three. And he's so quick. Copeland picks up his fifth foul. Isaiah Copeland, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, transfer from Georgetown, played at Brewster Academy. 12 points tonight. A couple of rebounds, fouls out. And Eric Coleman at the free throw line for Mississippi State. 72% free throw shooter. Coleman short with the first. A miss here, and you feel yeah. like you still got a chance. No question about it. And I know it's a two-possession game if he misses this, but I'm still going right to the rim unless I get a kick out wide open. Three-point shot. Second free throw coming for Holman. Makes it. Seven points is the lead for Mississippi State. Nebraska conserving as much time as they can. Ahead, long three. Palmer off the mark. Rebound, Quindary Weatherspoon. Roby will pick up his fifth foul. And Mississippi State and its fans starting to feel it at the hump. Now this is a big stepping stone if Mississippi State can hold on. You get to the postseason for the first time since 2012, 12. I, be 12, I believe. And now you're in it and you win one. And as soon as you win that first game, you realize after tonight, you're one of 16. And that gets exciting. Obviously the goal for all of the teams in the NIT, figure out a way to get to Madison Square Garden. A couple of free throws there for Quindary Weatherspoon, a nine point game with 23 and a half seconds remaining. And Nebraska has a lot of pieces coming back, most of their team. In fact, all the guys we see on the court, Coming back next year, except for Gill. This is going to be an NCAA tournament team next year in Nebraska. You think we're looking at two NCAA tournament teams next year? No question. They both bring most of their scoring, assist, and rebounds back. Great recruits coming in. The 1400th win in Mississippi State program history. Ben Howland's club improves to 23 and 11 on the year. Season comes to an end for a Nebraska team that goes 22 and 11 after a 13 and 5 year in the Big Ten. You said it. You look before, ahead to next year. You got a couple of teams that feel like they will be not just on the bubble or in the conversation, but can play their way into the NCAA tournament next year. This year, it's Mississippi State headed to Waco on Sunday for a second round meeting with Baylor. That's going to be a heck of a game. Lamar Peters, Quindary, Quindary Weatherspoon, Manu Lacan. Big time game coming up at Baylor. Our final score tonight in Starkville, Mississippi State 66, Nebraska 59. That wraps it up, wraps it up from us. For Humphrey Coliseum, coming up next on ESPN2 Sports Center. For Paul Biancardi and our entire crew, I'm Richard Cross. Good night from Starkville.